But then something happened. Their wives saw a metamorphosis in their husbands. Their husbands became different people, better husbands and better fathers and better human beings. During the Sima Shas, I brought my son along, and I remember he came home afterwards and says, Ma, Tati has to do the Dafyomi. It's going to make him a better father and a better husband. It's an awesome feeling, you know. The the magnitude and the fortitude of the Siyam Shas. It was a real push for me to start again and be connected to the cycle that everyone's going through. Never in my life have I felt such an hisorus and an awakening of Torah. I was watching it online and I got that, you know, hisorus and it just hit me. I got to do it. I had learned brachas before, so I, you know, I felt like it was an easy start. And once I got going and I got into it, I, I just, I wouldn't give up, with, you know, every day. I, I knew I couldn't give up that day's daf. My kids didn't come, but when I got home, they said, you're going to make it next year, next time, right? Um, so I was very motivated. And, and my seven-year-old asked me, do all tatis do that? And I said, you know, I, I, I I used to do it. <laughs> I didn't finish, but uh, you know what? I'm going to try to do this. When you're 13, 14 years old, I'm going to take you to the Seba Shas. During COVID, everything was upside down and crazy. We stuck through Zoom. We try really hard. Um, so I did find it very challenging at the beginning to give it over on, on Zoom. I have to say that the 
Chaburo, they really rallied together. They didn't miss a day. I actually found that there were more people that were coming during COVID and showing up on Zoom every morning. More people showed up on the Zoom than came into the, to the regular. It was very nice. They couldn't go anywhere for three months or two months and it really gave them a push to put a little bit of extra roughness in their life. I set up my laptop in my office, Gamora, camera screen. It was probably the only normal part of our day in a world that was upside down. At least the DAF was the one constant in our life. I don't, I don't believe we lost a day. We just kept it going. I was already deep into it. I, I couldn't back out. It was Baruch Hashem, they had the, the video, the Zoom, and it was amazing. One thing that didn't change throughout COVID, the, the DAF is, you know, there every day. It's a terror being such a dominant factor in your life that something which who knows what it could do for your neshama and for the ruchness of your family. The siyum is still continuing. It is still going on. That is the strength of Torah. That is the strength of Daf Yomi. There's no question that anybody who decides they want to do this can do this and it will change your life. Just jump in. Just do it. Berachamim to Hoshu Besish Koin Besoicho Kashel di Bavarto Besish Koin Besoicho Kashel di Bavarto Liru Sholagin Iyirko Berachamim Berachamim toshuv besish koin besoicho kasher di bavavarto besish koin besoicho kasher di bavavarto ay 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 uvnei yisa hoy bekov avavavoroi biyomeinu. Oi bini anoi la la va me vechi se do vi do vi da de kho oi me hero le soy kho to khin ay 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 you ne yo so because va va roi bi ya va va me no Oye bine ya noy la vechi se dobi dobi dablecho hoy me hiro le soy khatochi The Liru Shalayim, Yirucho, Oy Berachamim, Berachamim Toshu, Sishkoim Besoicho, Kasher Di Barto, Sishkoim Besoicho, Kasher Di Barto. Oi bekov avav avoroi Biyok meinu Oi bini anoi lo avam Vechisei dovid Dovid avdecho Oi meiro Lesoi chotochin Ay 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 uvnei oiso because of the
Basically, one of the Amaroyim said, I deserve credit because any time I witnessed a Tzuvim or Rabbanon, I witnessed a Talmud Chacham or an aspiring Talmud Chacham finishing a Masechta, I threw a party in celebration of that Siyam. And everybody wants to know what's so special about this party. So there are basically, I could say, over two Mahalchen. But the Bali Musar, as Rav Shem from Kelam, discusses the subject. Rebbe Chazizel goes on a pasuk in the Tochacha. Tachas asher lo avadata asher shav lo kimcha besimcha betov leiv of meiroiv koil. The avadata is soivecha beeirum of the And he asks the obvious question that anybody that's maver sedra asks: For not doing mitzvahs besimcha betov leiv of, we go and the penalty for that is the worst level of golus beeirum of the so Rebbe Shachzizel says so beautifully, it's not a punishment, it's a dynamic, it's a projection. If mitzvahs are done, if Torah is learned without enthusiasm, without cheshek, without shuka, without joy, it won't have a kiyum. The Yetzirah will always find ways to have it peter out. We have to infuse joy we have to infuse geschmack. The pasuk says, "Dvash v'chol of tachas l'shoinai," honey and milk. We know we bring a three-year-old child to school. We give him a drop of honey on the oisius, holy oisius of the Torah. Why? Because somehow it forms a, a connection by the child. That sweetness, as embodied in honey, is the is the ultimate sweetness which we're going to take out of Torah. Torah is sweet. Torah is delicious. A siyum, masechta, finishing a masechta like yuma, a masechta such mole, so many chalkei Torah, it's kochim, and it's moyit, and it's bikuach nefesh, and it's so deep, it's so diversified, and to tap it all off, you have a banquet, you have a simcha, you have speakers, you have music, and, the, and you have a festive, a festive banquet. There's association, even in adults, an association is formed in the, in the psych, psych of the person. Ah! Mesukim mitvash v'noif esuvim. Anechmodem mizovu mipozrov. But the beauty of Torah, it's meshivas nofesh, it's machkimas pesi, it's mesamche leiv. And it's so important. If we could make a mesechta on the mesechta, a mesechta's katana, it would also have been kedai. We just can't. Yuma now is for a while going to be the last Masechta Gadoila, relatively, and we're making that see him. It's such an important thing. Thank you 
for all those that are sponsoring it. I understand this Agudas Yisrael is a project, and we thank Agudas Yisrael to always be at the head of the machine, the, the young people running this part of the Aguda. It's tremendous to be understanding the Ruchni is the and Gashmi is the need of our of our growing community. Taisile. Taisile that you created this Yom Etovel Rabbana and HaKadosh Baruch Hu shall repay you with tremendous Yat HaDashmai. The Chabura that we have here, it's really, it's a close-knit group of guys mostly from the shul. It's a great Chabura, and it's, uh, we all get along. This is the first share I can say that I'm really into. It's, it's a very interactive share. People are free to talk off questions, some jokes, you know, here and there. If you have to show up every day, sit down and listen to the Chabura, you know, you keep it going. Coming every day and seeing that the same Elam puts in the same commitment that I put in, it makes me want to keep doing it and keep pushing. The Magad Shir makes time every single day to prepare this year, and not only just Gemara Rashi, Taisus, and Mepharshim, he's also very witty and very quick with comebacks. He, the way he explains it, it just goes in, it seeps in. Rabbi Huda Shir is totally in another league. We're very, very blessed. It's good for me as a person and it helps me grow. It helps me turn off work. If I didn't have this achrayas, I would still be in the office. Nowadays we have a chat. People will post charts from other chats. People post questions. If I make a chart while I'm preparing, I'll post a picture of my chart. One thing that didn't change throughout COVID, the, the daf is, you know, there every day. The only thing that kept me going day to day was giving the daf a share every night. And we did it on Zoom. Kazara is always very important. After every shear, you write down one thing that you remember from the year. All it is, is is two lines for each daf. It forces you to chazer the daf. To try to make a nice scene for them, which is something very important. This way people feel like they've achieved the goal. Whether it's for daf or for social reasons, whatever you do, come home happy you go. It's hard on my wife, but uh, my wife is very supportive of it. It's never too late to start. Don't feel like we're in the middle of a cycle that you can't start. You'd be surprised how, how much you can accomplish in such a short amount of time. A year and a half since the Siyum, uh, although it, uh, you'll never forget that Siyum, that was an incredible moment in Clydesdale's history. Lucky with the eyes that were able to witness it, especially uh, live. Uh, it was a cold day, but put that aside, uh, the memories are etched in our minds. Like the Gemara says, whoever did not see Simhabit Eva in Jerusalem has not seen a Simha in his life. We could probably say the same thing. Whoever was not at the event of Siyum Mashas at MetLife, the last round has not seen a siyum in his life, and that's for sure, because there probably hasn't been a siyum like that in the history. Always the challenge after these great, you know, events is the, uh, the fallout. You know, everybody's gung-ho the day after the siyum, and uh, without a doubt, uh, a lot of people, thousands of people registered, new people I'm talking, starting Masechet Berachot. Uh, then the pandemic hit. You know, we started Shabbat, I know myself, I think I got to page 11, and at page 11 already began quarantine. Now, uh, the question was, was that for you and me, uh, was, it, was it going to be able to survive COVID? That was really the question. Uh, we don't know what everybody was doing in their homes, although I am assuming that there was a lot of extra time on people's hands. And I have to assume, and I think it's the fact, that people now found that they're able to do the daf. Many people actually told me during COVID they were able to do the daf much better than they were able to do it when things were normal. You know, when things are normal, you have to do it in an hour, if you're lucky. And when things are not normal, you're home all day long, they had the leisure and the luxury to, you know, to look at some other mefarshim, to review it, to study it. So it was, uh, by and large, I know for myself and my Talmidim, it actually COVID and daf yomi in relation to daf yomi was actually a positive, uh, positive experience. It's a silver lining, probably, in COVID. The good news is now that it's behind us. I'm not wearing a mask yet today. It's behind us. Uh, Baruch Hashem, the pandemic, Baruch Hashem, is on the way out. Just look at the resurgence of all the synagogues that were holding Daf Yomi Shi'urim. I don't think we lost one. I don't think one Shi'ur has closed down or shut its uh, 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 doors, or stopped its meetings as a result of it. So Baruch Hashem, that means the people were itching to get back. The people were yearning. To, and once the doors were open, everybody came back. 
And uh, I know in my shi'ud, which I don't think is an exception, I think my shi'ud is the rule for shi'ud even around the country and around the world, we picked up a lot of new members. You know, listen, a pandemic is a very rare event and people start to take stock on their lives, on what they're doing, on priorities. People realize that they don't have to work the long hours that they were working before. They realize they can do things at home. They realize that they're a little more flexible in their time. And therefore, they realize that their spiritual side of learning, there's room for it. Where before COVID, they said, it's not for me, it's impossible, I'm too busy, it's too hectic. The uh, COVID actually slowed the pace of life and showed them different options that they can get just as much done and have a lot of time extra in order to study the Torah. So Baruch Hashem, Daf Yumi is like kryptonite. It stood the test of time. Uh, even with, through a pandemic and difficult times, Baruch Hashem, it survived. And uh, my bet is on Daf Yumi, it will survive. It survived for, uh, I don't know, 2,500 years. The Daf has been with us. And uh, if anything is permanent, the Daf Yumi is permanent. If anything is stable, the Daf Yumi is stable. And uh, therefore, congratulations. We're finishing these Masichtot, Masichet Yoma, fantastic. Uh, you know, Kippur for three and a half months. It's incredible. Uh, studying about the, the great holiday, Day of Atonement, and I'm sure that by studying it, we get all the benefits of it. And uh, I congratulate all the members that are going to finish it. Uh, yeah, I have a beautiful Masichtot coming up. You got Rosh Hashanah, Sukkah, these are gorgeous Masichtot. You know, you give yourself a month or a little more, and you knock off a Masichet, and these are practical Masichtot. You couldn't learn these Masichtot at a better time. We're going to study Rosh Hashanah, and then a few weeks later, it's going to be Rosh Hashanah. You're going to study Sukkot, and it's probably going to be Sukkot at that time. So these, that for your mean miracles, are going to happen again in front of our eyes, where they're going to, they're going to coalesce. And whatever you're learning is actually going to be applicable to the time that you're in. So again, Mabruk, Mazal Tov, Yagdir Torah Yadir, stay the course, and Be'azat Hashem, uh, the Dafa Yumi will continue as it always was, and Be'azat Hashem, the Torah is La'ad, Nitzchiyut, Venesa Israel, Lo Yishakir, Amen. Oh,
Keshes bisoyche honon, marechoyen. Emes maneda, hayo hayo koyen gadol. Emes maneda, hayo koyen gadol. Bitzeso. Shehel besh sule tzuhurim Marech oyeh Kevered anasun besech ginas chemed Marech oyeh Kezeher anasun al metzach melech Marech oyeh 
כחסד הניתן על פני חוסון, מערך אויין. אמס מה נהדר, אוי 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 אין גודל, אמס מה נהדר, אוי אוי אין גודל, בצי Mazel Tov to all those who just finished Masechus Yoma. As you have seen, the majority of this Masechta describes the Avoda of Yom Kippur, and along the way, the Gemara has provided numerous details about the structure of the Beis HaMikdash. Imagine being able to take all that information off of the page and put it into a computer model to get a realistic picture of what the Beis HaMikdash actually looked like. What you are about to see is a virtual model of the second Beis HaMikdash based on Talmudic and historical sources that will help bring Masechus Yoma to life. Let's start here in the Lishchas Palhedrin. Now, the truth is, I'm a little bit overdressed for a walk through the Beis Migdash, and I'm not even a Kohen, so you're going to have to use your imagination for that part. The Mishnah in Midos calls this room the Lishchas Ha'etz, or the Chamber of Wood. It's built on the northern side of the Beis HaMikdash, and it's where the Kohen Gadol would stay for the whole week before Yom Kippur. And because the Kohen Gadol lived in this room, there was a mezuzah on its door, the only room in the Beis HaMikdash with a mezuzah. It's called the Chamber of Wood because it's built out of wood. But as you can see, only half of the room is made out of wood. The other half is regular stone. There's a rule based on a Pasuk that you can't build any structural wooden elements inside the Azara. Now, this chamber of wood is located right on the border of the Azara. So the northern part of the room, which is over the Har Habayis, could be made out of wood. But the southern part of the room, which is inside the Azara, had to be made out of stone. And because this room was located half in and half out of the Azara, the Kohen Gadol had to be careful what he did here. For example, you're not allowed to sit down in the Azara unless you happen to be a king from Malchus based of it. So when the Kohen Gadol wanted to sit down or sleep in this room at night, he could only do it in the part of the room that was outside the Azara. We are standing in the chamber of Avtinas. This room was located on the southern side of the Azara, right above the Shar Hamayim, or water gate. This chamber is where the Avtinas family would carry out the preparation of the Katoris, offered twice a day in the base of Mikdash. In this room, they had all the equipment they needed, the mortars, the pestles, and the scales, to prepare hundreds of pounds of katores at a time. This room is also where the Avoda of Yom Kippur really began. The Kohen Gadol spent the entire night of Yom Kippur in this chamber. He wasn't allowed to sleep, so he stayed up, either giving his own drasha to the people who were gathered there, or listening to the Chachamim, who would tell him some of the more interesting parts of Torah. And if he started to doze, they would snap their fingers and suggest that he stand up and put his bare feet on this cold marble floor. They kept him awake all night until early in the morning of Yom Kippur, he would step through this door and immerse himself in a mikvah located right next door before beginning the day's avodah. Aside from immersing his body in a mikvah, the Kohen Gadol also washed his hands and feet with water taken from the kior. This was a large copper vessel that was kept in the Azara between the Mizbeach and the Ulam. The kior you see here is based on the Malbim to Sefer Malachim. It was four Amos tall, that's about six or eight feet. The top part was a cylinder, the bottom part was square. There were also 12 spigots along the bottom so that on a regular day, all of the Kohanim who were taking part in the Avoda of the Korban Tamid could wash their hands and feet at the same time. Now, this kior had walls that were about one inch thick and made of solid copper. And when you add the weight of the water that was inside it, the whole thing came to about 6,000 pounds. 
That's about the weight of a 12-seater van. And for halakhic reasons, they had to lower the kior into a stream of water every single night and raise it up again the next day. How did they do this? A Kohen Gadol named Ben Katin invented a machine called a muchni for this task. And while we don't know exactly what this machine looked like, we do know it was made out of wood, it had some sort of gear or pulley mechanism, and it was operated by a single coin at a time. Whatever it looked like, it was clearly an amazing feat of engineering. Speaking of engineering, let's move now into the chamber of Parva, located near the southeastern corner of the Azara. In here, the Kohanim would process the hides of the Karbanos and turn them into usable leather, which they would get to keep. On the roof of this chamber was a mikvah. This mikvah was used by the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur. The Gemara explains that Parva was the name of the man who designed this room and the mikvah. And the Gemara also tells us that he was an Amgushi, a sorcerer. Of course, it is unimaginable that the Chachamim would have allowed sorcery, which is Asr de Araisa, to be used in the construction of a Beis HaMikdash chamber. So what does the Gemara mean? Teferis Yisrael in Masechas Midos explains that Parva was not really a sorcerer, but rather an expert engineer whose knowledge of fluid dynamics was so ahead of his time that he was able to hide the plumbing for this mikvah so cleverly that no one could figure out how he got the water from the floor all the way up to the roof. So it seemed like magic. I'd like to show you one more area of the Beis HaMikdash, an area that featured prominently in the Avoda of Yom Kippur, and that is the Kodesh HaKadashim. In the second Beis HaMikdash, this room was separated from the Kodesh by two large curtains, one in front of the other, and spaced an Amma apart. The Kohen Gadol entered the Kodesh HaKadashim a number of times on Yom Kippur to offer the Ketores and to sprinkle the blood of the Karbanos, and this is what he would have seen. This room is 20 amos by 20 amos, about 30 or 40 feet to a side, and was magnificently plated with decorated gold tiles from the floor to the ceiling. In the center of the room, you can see the Evan Hashisia protruding a little bit from the floor. This is actually the top of Mount Moriah, the place where Avraham bound Yitzchak upon him as Beach, the place where Yaakov slept and saw the vision of the ladder, and the place where, in the first base of Mikdash, Shlomo HaMelech put the Aron. The Aron was hidden away at the end of the first temple period and has not been found since. So for the entire 420 years of the second temple era, this room stood empty. In the back of this room is a large opening, eight amos tall, that led into one of the ta'im, or small rooms, behind the Heichal building. This opening was built here for technical reasons, to allow korbanos to be shechted in certain parts of the Azara, but it also allowed the Chachamim to watch the Kohen Gadol as he did the Avoda inside the Kodesh HaKadashim. Unfortunately, at the end of the Second Temple era, the Kohen Gadol was not always the most scrupulous individual, and the Chachamim had to make sure that he was doing the Avoda correctly. It has been almost 2,000 years since we last had a Beis HaMikdash, and the Jewish people have been davening for its return every single day. Emir Tzashem, we should be Zoha to exchange this virtual Beis HaMikdash for a real house of wood and stone, Eitzim ve'avanim, and that this coming Tisha B'Av should be transformed from Evel Liyom Tov. Ra
tells us in Mesech de Brochus that Divrei Taira always needs chizuk. There are certain things that need strengthening and Taira is one of them that the Gemara brings out that we have to constantly strengthen ourselves. Now we're holding in the daf, we're holding by finishing Mesech de Yume 
And sometimes we make a siyum and we make a lavish meal and then we feel the, the, the simcha and it propels us to want to continue on to learn the daf, the next mesechte. But really, in essence, it says in the Svorim that when you finish a mesechte, you, a malach gets created. And we know this from a story that took place. There was somebody who learned Mesech the Chagig his whole life. And then when he was Nifter, a Malach came in the, in the form of a lady. And she, she was, and they asked her, what's her name? And she said, Chagig is her name. And she was there. There was nobody around to bury him. And she saw to it that they should bury him. But a Malach gets born from you when you finish a Mesechte, and that gives you a special siyata dishmaya to want to continue to one siyum is geirer, another siyum. This is a special zach that happens because you are Messiah. So there's really going to be a siyata dishmaya for everybody who finishes the Mesechte. The Gemara tells us in the Chazal, the Zoyer says that somebody who finishes a Mesechte, he's Yoris Alme. He's Yarshan's a whole world. A whole world is created from your Mesech that you learned. We don't have the spiritual eyes to see it, but you have gotten and you were Zeichet for a whole world that's your world from the Mesech that you learned. I want to share with you just a little thought, you know, in the Hadron that we say by our by the seam of the Mesech, there's a little thing that you know, it was always striking me. It says when you finish a mesechta, you make a short tefillah. Kishem shazartani l'sayim mesechta yume, and this is by every mesechta. Just like you helped me finish mesechta yume, Cain Tazreni, you should help me lahaschu mesechtas usvoyim achem ulesaimon. We make a special tefillah to the Rebbeinu Shom. Help me start a mesechta and help me finish the next mesechta. Now, there's a tefillah that every person who finishes a mesechta should say this tefillah. And this tefillah helps you because you're davening to the Reboi Nishlam and it gives you a special siyata dishmaya that the Reboi Nishlam will help you to continue on in your daf to learn new mesechtas and finish new mesechtas. But it used to bother me. Why say, Kein tazreni lahaschel? That would think, I would think that's easy to begin a Mesechte. The difficulty is to finish a Mesechte. So the Tefillah should have merely have been, I'm asking you, Reboi Nishom, help me finish the next Mesechte. But why do we add, help me to begin a Mesechte? And the reason for this is, there's a Medrash that says the difference between a wise person and somebody who's a foolish person. A wise person understands that he takes day by day. Every day he learns a little and then it adds up and accumulates over the time he's going to accomplish and he's going to finish and he's going to become more of the bigger Talmud Chacham. He's going to know more and that's the way he approaches everything. A foolish person, the manager says, he gets, he gets scared to even start. And the reason why he gets scared to start is because he figures, look at how big it is and how much I have to learn. It's going to be too difficult for me to do that. So we need a special tvila. Don't get afraid of t- undertaking to learn a mesechta because it start and you do day by day. Don't think that, how can I start because I'm looking at the end. Don't look at the end, but look at every day separate. And this day you can do it. You can start, you can do it. Now, being that we're going to begin a new Mesechta, which is not so large, like we were doing big Mesechtas, like Shabbos and Ervin, Psochim, and those were much more difficult Mesechtas because they were so large and so difficult. So there it's more... All that a person will get 
think it's too difficult. But now we're going into a period that we're going to have smaller mesechtas and it's going to be easier for us to undertake to begin it because it's only going to be a small mesechta. So even if you haven't learned and joined the daf, now is the time to join because now you can start and you know that it's not something that's going to be so big and so long and you're worried how am I going to be able to keep it up. You make yourself a goal that I'm going to start one mesechta at a time and this mesechta I'm going to learn and it's not going to be so difficult. But there's an added benefit that we are now, we're learning mesechta of Moyed, and it works out in the cycle of Adaf Yoimi that we're learning those in Yonim that have to do with this Magal Ashone, with the Chagim that we're in. These Mesechtas are Mamish right now, so Negea Lemaise. You learn Mesechta Yume, it gives you a much clearer understanding of what the Dinim of Yom Kippur is, what the Avoid is Yom Akipurim, and you get a better feeling for the Kedusha Sayoim of Yom Kippur. And now we're going to begin another Mesechta, which is Mesechta Suke, which is a Dover Beitoi Matoiv. This is now the time that we know that we always spent a 30 day period before a Chag to prepare yourself for a Chag. Masech Tesuki is more than 30 blot and it fits in mamish in this time of the year when it's you're getting an idea of preparation for the Yontif of Sukkis. So this is an added mila, an added Indian that makes it easier for us to join the Dafa Yoimi now. Now that we're learning those in Yonim that have to do with the, with the Zman of the Shonem, Anybody who hasn't joined yet up in the Dafa Yoimi should start now. It's never too late to begin. Now is the time to make your commitment and join up and t- start off now with Mesech Tzuke. If you have been doing the Daf, you should be Mechazik yourself and realize that you're going to be learning Mesechtas that are really very important for you in the in the, in the Tkufa Sashone. It's going to give you a better understanding of all the different things and different Yom Toivim that we go through in the, in the Meshach of the Yor. So everybody should undertake to be Mechazik themselves and be daven to the Reboi Shalom. help me to continue in the Limud Hadaf, and Be'ezer Hashem, you'll get a special Siyata Dishmaya, those that have finished the Masech, they get a special Siyata Dishmaya, they have Malochim that help him to continue on, and everybody should see to undertake to learn the Daf, and after you'll begin it, you'll see that it's not so difficult as you thought it was, and once you get used to it, you get Ein that you're going to, this is how your day revolves and it changes your whole day. You're going to feel that you started your day off on the right foot and you still did Avek Toiradik and once you get used to it, it's going to become Be'ezer Hashem easier for you to continue. So Be'ezer Hashem, everybody should have a special broch in Atzloche that they should be able to be Zoycha to learn one Mesechte after another Mesechte and Be'ezer Hashem, you will, before you know it, you'll be seeing that you're already finishing Shas and you should be able to be Zoycha to be Messiah Shas. <laughs>
it was it was something that I think will seamlessly really slide into what we're doing already. It gives another option for children to learn. You have children from third grade through 10th grade in, involved in all types of Lima Tyra throughout Shabbos. But uh, for anyone who was able to see the layout and the curriculum of the Masvidia Shabbos book that was put together, it was so user-friendly to any age of a boy. I think that um, I actually believe when a boy sees it, that he will literally look forward to Shabbos to see the next edition. It's almost like, uh, you know, they run for the Mishpacha Junior and for all the little exciting uh, kitty friendly books. The Masmidia Shabbos uh, leak that was put together is so beautiful. So I, I think the fact that it's another option for children to learn on Shabbos, what a beautiful addition to the whole camping world. So Shkayev to, to Rabbi Rosenberg, to Shmuley and everyone who's involved in the whole process. Thank you. Great, excellent, beautiful input. Thank you for sharing. Rabbi Foyer, tell us, what do you think, uh, how do you think Masmidia Shabbos is going to be impacting Camp Aguda and their Shabbos program? I, well, I got to tell you, Rabbi, because Sue's basically said it all, but I have to tell you that uh, the camps around the mountains and I guess the world over, there's something very unique about Shabbos in camp is because when we say that Shabbos is Me'en Olam Haba, when you're in the mountains, in a secluded area, with hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of uh, Jewish uh, yeshiva bacharim and boys from all ages, you really feel the kedusha of Shabbos because there's no hill of Shabbos. You're mamish secluded somewhere out there, and there's no, uh, there, you don't really see cars, you don't see airplanes up here. You know, as we say, the Sfarim tell us, that the day of Shabbos speaks. It really speaks to us. And, you know, over the years, with all the craziness in the world and all the distractions, we're, we're seeking desperately that we should reclaim this Mishabach V'aymer, that the children, all of us, and not only children, the adults as well, but let's start from the bottom up, from the Helega Kindalach, the Mishabach V'aymer, we, we, we need that back desperately. And, you know, another program, and, a, and a, like Rabbi Kasu said, those, uh, the booklets that they're giving out with the high gloss and the kid-friendly, and with all the Marmachimists, the Chazal, the Gemaras, the Halacha, the stories, the vignettes, it's it's unbelievable. It's it's mechay of everyone to to get, get get things going on that level. There was so much put into it, and I really feel that the Shabbos is going to become glory. It is glorious, but it's going to become glorious for the kids. They're really going to be able to tap into the the kayach of Shabbos in such a glorious way. And hopefully, and I think this is the point that they're going to take it back to the city with them, and it's going to continue, and they're going to spread the word amongst the other kids in yeshivas and to their families, and, you know, when they're looking forward to all this great stuff, it definitely is going to make uh, the Yom Shvi speak and sing and uh, give us the beauty and the glory of Shabbos again. I couldn't agree with you both anymore. Uh, you know, we all, in our own camps, we all have our own programs. I know where I am in Camp Ray, and we have an area of Shabbos, a learning program to get the kids down to school earlier with prizes and incentives, and then is the Shabbos afternoon Mishnayis program, which is Baruch Hashem, very, very successful. I think a huge advantage to this program is how much is, is of it is contained. We're, it's not additional work for the camp, but it enhances camp on a level to take all of the various different elements, side the Ruchmiya, side the Gashmiya, really loop it all together in a very, very attractive package without adding that much more responsibility on the camps to implement, because I, I think I speak for all of us, we're pretty much tapped out on personnel, even though everybody loves getting involved in extracurricular programs, especially as it enhances the kids' involvement. But to have something like this, the implementation of it was done in such a user-friendly way, and it's multifaceted in that it enhances both the Ruchnius and the Gashmias. I can't agree with you more. Yehuda, I mean, this is like Matana Ganuza. Shabbos is Matana Gnuza, and you're giving us a gift. I know Shmuley put a lot of effort in, and everybody on the top over there, whoever's involved, and Rabbi Hazan and many others, this is a gift. You're giving a gift to Klal Yisrael, and we're starting it off at the camp. And like you said, it's like taking the place of many, many people, many personnel, because to be able to put that kind of effort and amount of work to, yeah. to, to go and consolidate so much and so quick and give it out was a tremendous effort, or Kalian, I would say. And it's going to be put to good use. So, yeah, Shikayach. Yes, Ray Foyer, you said it very well. You know, today, 
it's uh, it's frightening. You know, the kid, our children are facing an onslaught of outside interference in so many different ways and trying to disrupt what it means to be a growing, nice Tardik Yid. Um, you know, perhaps in the New York area versus out of town area, it's even worse just because, you know, the um, the freeness and the liberalness of New York make things a little harder. But um, the idea of giving children a better understanding of what Shabbos, I mean, who, you know, we grew up, Shabbos was something that was uh, so part of our vernacular that you look to Shabbos and we, you know, as much as we maybe don't understand what it means, the Kedush of Shabbos, but everyone knew there was a halo of Shabbos and that we could have a new, um, this publication, which not only was done so well, we keep talking about that, you know, today the children have the gadgets and all the different things and they're so colorful and they're so enticing and they lure you into this arena of whatever they're playing with. This booklet, which is a, an allure in its own way, is such a beautiful stepping stone to be able to reclaim what Shabbos is. And of course, during yeshiva, during the year, most yeshivas have curriculums that talk about Shabbos, Kaidish, and Halachas, and Mishnai, Islam, Malachas, whatever it might be. But here is a book that all encompasses so many different aspects of the Kedush of Shabbos and different uh, limudim of Shabbos, whether it's miris or tefillahs and stories, as you said earlier, we need to tap into the children, the camps, when I say the we, together with the yeshivas, that uh, the chashivas and the helikat of Shabbos could chas v'shalom not be lost. And that's this onslaught that the children are facing today, not just children, adults, if we could be part of something to preserve that, and this will be a tremendous, tremendous uh, Rabbi Armo, you just pointed out a great point. Something that really resonated with me about this program was that no, no disrespect to intent any yeshivas or their curriculum, but I think when you go if you ask them what is all about, the first thing they'll start to tell you is all the lamatas malachas, the things that you can't do. But what is Shabbos? What is the mila of Shabbos? What is the deliciousness of Shabbos and the oinig of Shabbos? That's something that even though a lot of yeshivas and, and schools do emphasize, but it's still something that needs to be brought into the kids' level. And in as much as they're definitely getting it to a large degree from their homes, but to have an understanding, to learn and understand the appreciation of the positive elements of Shabbos instead of only focusing on it from the Lama Tas Malach. And teachers do a fabulous job making it gishmak and relevant. But I think that that's something that this program, to me, resonated with a tremendous amount. It's the delight of Shabbos and how special it is. And, and that's something that I, uh, I truly appreciate. Rabbi Foyer, anything to add on this? Yeah, you know, I could I just, I want Rabbi Kasus, and you just mentioned, I want to tell you a couple of years ago, and again, this is where camp could really change be a game changer. A number of years ago, there was a play put on a camp. These are things that we don't do in the, during the year in yeshivas, but camp, there are a lot of plays. And I don't remember if it was a musical or cantata or whatever it was. There was a play and the, the storyline was about Shabbos. I happened to have been there during the play and I was, I was really blown away by the Rabbi Finkelman, Shima Finkelman. He writes our plays and all the staff, uh, their acting, etc. And it was such an incredible play that at the end of the play, I was so moved I jumped onto the bleachers. It's not really something I usually would do, but I, I was so moved. I jumped onto the bleachers. I got the entire camp singing, you know, Shabbos, hey, look at Shabbos. Your mom has changed my life. And we had hundreds of kids swaying back and forth, dancing to those words, Shabbos changed our lives. That, that like you said, it's, it's the Lama Tesvalachas are the Lama Tesvalachas, of course. But to give the, I would call it like my father, he always says, there's a difference between text and texture. Well, there's a lot that we give our children in the yeshivas about text, but the home is where you pick up the texture, and camp is somewhere because it's so pure, and there, there's so much opportunity to just give the kids the texture, the flavor, the tom of Shabbos. It, it's a game changer. It could really change the kids' lives. With, this, with these booklets and with, uh, with incentives you're giving and with the whole initiative, the push, it could really be something special. Rabbi Foyer, just to comment on that, how do you envision kids taking this program and moving it forward? How do you imagine this changing their lives 
moving forward into the future? Well, listen, it's like a seed. You're giving the kid a seed and it's going to grow. You know, we just have to continue to water it. You can't let it just be a four week initiative in the summer. There's got to be good follow up during the winter months and try to impress upon the yeshivas perhaps to get involved in this on, you know, this level, this kid friendly, and then move it up to the older kids and then young adults, and then it will spill over to the adults. And hopefully you have a revolution over here. You know, like I remember in the beginning, the onset of this whole program, I, I, I used the ideas that, you know, where Mayor Shapiro made, or see him, the Daf Yoimi, and where Sarah Schneer made uh, Beis Yaakov. And I really think that this, this is something that could be a game changer in quality Israel. I really believe in it. And I believe that this is just the beginning of something tremendous. Sure. And Amar, we're hoping and davening is going to keep on going. Rabbi uh, Foyer, I, just, I would like to just you know, mention one thing, that we're saying unbelievable things. At the end of the day, leadership, if we're saying words, we have to actualize them. we got to bring it out. Whoever is going to be listening and zeroing in on this and participating, if you believe in it at the top, it'll filter to the bottom. If the children see and the counselors or whomever the staff sees that the leadership of the camp embraces it and then respects this, then this could be something that'll be unbelievable. So I'm stelling that word leadership because nothing happens by itself and it's got to come from the top. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're being given something very special here. And I believe that I see from the last couple of months, four or five, six months, there's a lot of push and there's a lot, a lot of emphasis on this. And I really believe in it. And I think that there's, there's going to be leadership, not only from the leadership of the yeshivas and camps, but I see leadership even from the lay leadership, we'll call it, and people that are supporting this and are pushing this. And, you know, whoever's on top over here is, is going to keep this and going to keep on, keep on pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And that's where we're going to go with this. We're going all the way. This is something that let's, we could do this. Take yes, it all the way. Let's make my smide hashabis the words. Let that words be in the mouths of the children and how it'll spill over. Not Laman because Masvidi Ashab is has to be successful. Klape, the, the you know the org, the Kihem Chayenu. That's an important thing. But at the end of the day, we want the Yiddish children to walk away to take something from their camp experience this year, and it should spill over uh -huh. if it's their homes into the school. You know, you know, Rabbi Kasus, the Tom Cipher says that we say every day at the end of davening, Hayoyim Yoyim, Rishon B'Shabbos, Shem B'Shabbos. Hayoyim Yoyim is gematria 117, and times six, six days of the week, is exactly 702, which is Shabbos. That's what the Chassam Cipher writes. So let it be the day, right? Every day. You got to get these kids to be Hayoyim Yoyim Rishon. Every day, B'Shabbos. Like you said, it's got to become part of their language, their vernacular. Live it, breathe it, Shabbos, and we'll get there. Terrific. Wonderful. I want to thank you, for, thank you both for joining. We should be zeichah that all of the efforts that we're planting now, like we, we've all been saying, should continue to bear fruit throughout the year on Shabbos. It's pretty much the only time that we could hope to be uh, kitesar on Shabbos, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank Have you been thinking about starting the DAF? Now is the time. And don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Start learning today and you'll complete seven Mesechtas in the next eight months. Seven Mesechtas in eight months. Sukkah, Beya, Rosh Hashanah, Tainus, Megillah, Mayid Cotton, and Chagiga. Start your journey through Shas today. I get asked this question all the time. Why should I learn Gemara? I don't have an ox, and I'm not planning on buying one. And I don't run through the street with pictures, you know? And if I marry a woman, it'll be, you know, with a ring, not with a piece of silk of indeterminate value. And if I divorce her, it'll be in Basin. I won't throw the get from my roof into her courtyard where it catches on fire on the way down, you know? So why am I learning this? It has no relevance to my life. And, uh, and people ask this all the time. A Kurdish Baruch who gave us the whole Torah. And if you don't see the whole, you don't appreciate it. You don't know where they started to come from. A Kurdish Baruch who didn't give you, 
you know, Arachayim. He didn't just give you a Hilcha Shabbos, he gave you everything. And everything ties together. And if you don't realize that, then you're missing everything. People think that Kolotar Kula is only for people like Rechayim Kiviaski. That's a mistake. Kolotar Kula doesn't mean to know every Baruch Bear. It doesn't mean to know every Shemesh Kap. It doesn't mean to know every Ksais. Kolotar Kula, there's a certain amount that everyone needs to know. The deep and the depth of Kolotar Kula, it's endless. Tar is endless. A Yid has to know Shas. The Chinuch has to be, you have to know Shas. A person should have leashed, have seen all of Shas. Probably that applies to Yerushalmi too, and to Sefra and Sifri, but at least that a person should have at least seen the words of all of Shas and learned it in a way that they can digest it, it's for sure a very positive thing. There's no Sif in Shulchan Aruch that says, Acha shalamadati v'yeshivu v'koylo ein chi avolai t'shtaig. There's no such Sif in Shulchan Aruch. A Jew has to steig. Until the last minute he's in this planet, he has to steig. So being a Balabas does not mean that you can't be a God will be Yisrael. And the goal is to continue and to grow, to steig, and to become a great Bucky and uh, an Amkon and everything else in learning. There's no reason why not. Torah is what supports Klal Yisrael. The Torah carries Klal Yisrael. Everyone needs to have a part of the Torah. And the learning, Bichlal, to everyone, either sure that it is, you're part of Klal Yisrael by sitting and learning Torah. A Balabas is Achrayas is to finish as much Torah as he can finish. That's his Achrayas. He's no different Achrayas than the younger man. There's no, it doesn't say anyone Shulchan Aruch about a Balabas is Chiyav and younger man's Chiyav. Everybody has to learn as much as they can learn. Now what does that mean? You have a wife, you have children, you have to continue Shtagi. Without Torah, a person doesn't have Chiyas. Whether you're in Yeshiva, you're not in Yeshiva, as a Chiyav to learn Torah twice a day, I tell all my Talmidim, all my alumni, I don't care what you do, how hard you work, you have to have two storm a day. Two storm a day. I don't care if it's a 10 minutes later in the morning, if it's Mishnahis, if it's Halacha, if it's Chumash. A Yid has two storm a day. Somebody who doesn't have two storm a day, he's not living his life as a Yid. Limit of Torah is zerteilt in zwei. In English, what man gesagt, it's split in two. So do Yidies a Torah, and so do Limit of Torah. So we learn that the Torah has two tachles, two other tachles. So one tachles is the Lamaid who omes a masa sheriasen, lo hoirois. Torah is a solution, lo hoirois, to vazen, to feed. Noch mit du a chaylek a Torah, so we learn that Torah. The kesher mit an eibishten alain, the yid mit an eibishten wird connected. The Torah is an adapter. The Torah is the Rabbi Shtaralayim. The mitzvahs are saying the Torah is to learn. Chavetz Chaim speaks out many times. He brings the Yishalmi in Peya that says that with no mitzvah that chuckled like Talmud Torah, every second that we learn, you mekayim in mitzvahs essay the Raisa. And the if somebody sits down and learns for 10 minutes, you have hundreds of mitzvahs. Beside that, that's posh. Rather, the chiv to sit and learn every day. That's posh. Like you have to wait film every day. You have to sit and learn every day. There's no excuse that a person shouldn't finish shas. He has to know shas. And not to, we, we, we think it's like some some incredible, unbelievable feat. It is an incredible, unbelievable feat. But it's not outrageous. It's not unreachable. And it's it's the responsibility of every from ben Torah has to know shas. There's talking no excuse. Makes no doubt for me. Even if you're sitting in a yeshiva, if you're out in the workforce, in the belt. Ayid Mitzias is Torah. And it helps you, it helps your mishpacha, it helps your wife, it helps your children. When they see that their father learns Torah, they connect it to Torah. A person that learns Torah, his children are going to learn Torah. And when his Torah is in Kalah Yisrael, there's Nitzchias. This is kept as an ala Torah, hard be as a girl. The Torah is what holds Ayid the Netzach. And that is why each Yachad must give serious thoughts to how he lives, how he raises his family, and there's no better way to guarantee the kiyom, the netzach, of our own neshamas and those of our loved ones than by establishing in one's daily life a program of Torah learning. Every person needs to learn. But I'm talking about on a basic level, I'm not talking about the mitzvah, I'm not talking about Torah, I'm talking about just connected to Ruchnius. Without this, you're dead. The words of the Torah, that's really HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And somebody that really learns Torah is connecting with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's the chiyas of the whole world, is the Borealim. And connecting with the Borealim is the only one way to connect with HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Luminat Torah. Whether you've been learning the daf 
or you're starting to as of today, whether you learn fast, slow, be'ian, be'kiyas, however you're kaveya item, Torah is our life. Whenever I see something kishmak in the daf, in that day's daf, I always like to find someone to tell it over to. I feel like when you share it with someone else, it certainly helps you retain it. In terms of chazara, I think a very good thing is to try to think at the end of the day, one or two ideas, write them down in a notebook, and review those one or two ideas. And if you remember a piece, other things come. The way the mind works is if you remember one thing, it leads to another thing. Take out at least what time you can, a kvias, and put it into writing. Make it yours. Personalize it. When you take a bavakama, you take a ksubis, you take an adarm, a psachim, a krisis, and you personalize it, you summarize it into bullet format. Summarize each parak, each daf. One line, two lines, v'chuleh, and you personalize you made it yours, it's much easier to remember your own style, your own signal, than to remember the daf. I started in my neighborhood in remote once a month to give a theme that basically is related to the sugas that are being learned, something fundamental and central that may interest a more broader audience. So at least you come up with something tangible and meaningful that sort of encompasses the main theme. And the other important thing to do is to make a seam at the end of every mesecta because that gives you a closure and you feel you accomplished something and it's a simcha. Our Magachir, Jesse Glibrin, when he is away, when he travels, he specifically tries to involve participants in the share to give the daf yomi themselves. If I know that I'm out, I know I'm out on the 23rd and 24th of June, I already have people assigned for those daf. And the guy who knows that it's the same three weeks from now pays attention for three weeks before. So it's a win-win situation. That requirement, that bar, of whatever you learned, are you able to teach it to somebody? Whether it's a Gemara, it's a Rashi, or a Taisa. You learned the Taisa, Taisa is a chilek in lambdas between two Gemaras, that over here it's like this, over here like that. Can you explain it to somebody? Well, that's cool, you learned. That bar of are you able to go teach it to somebody is true whether you're 18 or you're 80. Whether you're working 12 hours a day, you're learning 12 hours a day. It doesn't make the slightest difference. And if people would learn like that, they would love their learning, they would get the sweetness of learning. I made myself a resolution, I am not going to sleep at night unless I run the daf. Because once you get behind, it's so hard to catch up. It's very difficult to catch up. One time in the previous cycle, I really wanted to learn Zvachim and Nachas properly. I think I got behind something like 60 blocks. I was bound and determined to try and understand it. It took me almost a year to catch up. So the way I did it is I learned a blot and a quarter every day and just kept on chipping at it a little bit at a time. I won't move forward till I have some understanding. I'm not saying I understand every component perfectly, but I really won't move forward till I at least understand it cursory. The most worthwhile is if you prepare it beforehand, even if you just read through the Gemara without knowing what you're doing. Just read through the daf beforehand, you go to the shir and you chazer it over, it's unbelievable what you get. That's what I do. I, I do that myself. I want to just get a feel for where the daf is going. That doesn't mean I'm going to understand every idea. That doesn't mean I'm going to understand every punctuation. That doesn't mean I'm going to understand what every word means. But I got a feel for the daf. I just read through the daf. My answer is take the Mishnayis of the Masechta and continue to chazer the Mishnayis again and again and again. The Mishnayis are easy to chazer. They're meant to be a part of Chazara because they're easy to remember and they flow from one to the other. And at least if you remember that, or remember part of that, you have something in your pocket. For instance, on the way to work, home from work, over here, there, a few spare minutes, you pull a little Mishnah out of your pocket, and just go over it again. In Ashir, the Rav or the Rebbe, Magid Shir says, where were you? When you're on your own, the Gemara is not asking you that question. But if you tell other people you're learning the daf, and the guy behind you in Shul every so often asks you about the daf, and then you start getting embarrassed because you're three daft behind and five daft behind. It's a mechaev that I better be up to the daft because the guy behind me knows I'm learning the daft and is asking me questions, assuming I'm up to the daft.
552 days ago, we joined together in unity, 100,000 Yidden at the Siem Hashas. We stood united, we felt connected, we were inspired. We davened together, sang together, danced together, celebrating Tyra. Just 61 days later, the world changed. We stood isolated. We felt scared. We were lost. But that did not stop us. Every single day, day in, day out, every single daf, on the phone, on Zoom, through an app, or through a screen, we remained on the same page. We journeyed through Maseches Shabbos. We acquired Maseches Erevin, persevering, demonstrating, and declaring, Ki heim chayenu, Taira is our life. Every day, thousands of Leimdi Hadaf, together with their wives and with the support of their families, defying all odds, live the daf. In just 240 days, we will celebrate the Siyam on Seder Mayad. Two Sadarim, 13 Masechtas, 794 Blot, a third of the way through Shas. Get ready. March 2022, Adar Shani 5782, the Siyam on Mayad.